Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless the nba season's over so what's charles barkley up to i'm gonna buy some drinks for y'all and i'm gonna buy bud light hey let me tell you something all you rednecks are who don't want to drink bud light y'all what happened to Sir Charles? Bud like nothing compared to Disney. Remember the classic Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? Disney's making the fairy tale more inclusive. How are they doing it? They're firing six of the seven dwarves. I'm not sure the dwarves are thrilled with how inclusive Disney is now that they're out of a job. I guess Disney thought dwarves were offensive, so now none of them are allowed to work. And a lot of Disney characters look different. You remember Cinderella. Our next guest is a former LGBTQ activist. She was a part of a group promoting the queer agenda to communities and schools until she realized she didn't like what was going on. And now she's become a deprogrammer, helping parents and children understand the agenda that they were injected with. And the radical activists don't like it. The deep programmer Kay Yang joins me now. So when you were teaching these communities and these schools, what kind of bells went off when you said, wait a second, something doesn't sit right with me? So it was actually in the early 2010s that I was a programmer at an LGBT nonprofit. I was brought on as an outreach and education coordinator. And of course, at the time, I was so excited to be a young person to find a job that I thought was helping to bring valuable resources to community members. And unbeknownst to me at the time, my role was less about helping to protect vulnerable people from discrimination and more about being a young, bubbly face to put on the front of a massive marketing campaign that was attempting to gain roots in my own community. And talented young people are being weaponized against their own interests. That's what happened to me. I was sent to local area schools to work with local businesses and organizations and lead cultural sensitivity trainings. And we would teach people these new vocabulary words in gender identity ideology. And I had no idea at the time that this new terminology was the language of female erasure that would be used to take away my own sex-based rights. What other things was behind the agenda in your estimation? Well, you know, back then, 10 years ago, the idea of a trans kid was unheard of. The children that I was working with were in their teen years. And it was later after working at the LGBT center, I came to understand that what we were doing there was really paving the way for the creation and acceptance of the trans child. I was totally oblivious to the fact that I was being used as a Trojan horse because behind this message of inclusivity and kindness for everyone, there's a really sinister agenda to normalize these policies and practices that cause irreversible medical damage to healthy children and undermine the sex-based rights of women and girls. So um, part of my responsibility at the LGBT Center was helping to collate and complete program-wide reports that were required by our funders at the New York State Department of Health. And the more teens that we would have to report an LGBT identity, that meant we would receive more funding that could be used for what I believe are public indoctrination initiatives, 
led under the guise of LGBT health and human services. God gives a dire warning to anyone who would cause a child to sin, as we read in Matthew 18, 6 and 7. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of offenses, for offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8-11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. As tensions with North Korea intensify, our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz, got exclusive access aboard a U.S. nuclear sub pulling into South Korea for the first time in more than 40 years. This submarine is the most destructive warship in the world. Here is a deterrent to North Korea. But make no mistake, right now I am standing on top of hundreds of nuclear warheads. This morning, we're aboard that massive nuclear ballistic missile submarine in South Korea for an exclusive look. The USS Kentucky making history, the first submarine of its kind to travel to this country in more than four decades. Commander Randy Fike bringing us inside the sub's missile control center, where the sailors in here are ready for the worst. When we man battle stations, they ready the weapon system for launch. So this is where nuclear missiles would be launched from? Yes. Beneath, we see the ship's deadly arsenal up close. And this is what's below the deck, the missile tubes themselves. Inside most of the tubes are nuclear-armed warheads. They are ready to launch at any time. In here, there are 20 ballistic missiles on board, each with more than a dozen warheads capable of striking targets thousands of miles away. These tubes are exactly what our allies should have confidence in and exactly what our adversaries are deterred by. But North Korea's Kim Jong-un says the presence of this submarine brings nuclear conflict closer to reality. Shortly after the sub arrived in South Korea, Kim Jong-un test-fired two short-range ballistic missiles. In the war in Ukraine, Russian missiles and drones pounded Odessa and other port cities for a third straight night. Russia says it's punishment for an attack that closed its only bridge to the Crimean Peninsula. The State Department says it's an attempt by Russia to block Ukraine's grain exports, raising the threat of hunger in countries that desperately need that food. Overnight, parts of the Black Sea port cities of Odessa and Mykolaiv engulfed in flames from another night of Russian aerial bombardment. Ukrainian military officials say air defenses shot down five cruise missiles and 13 drones, clearly not all of them. More than 20 civilians were wounded in the latest wave of attacks, among them five children. 
It's the third straight night Russia has taken aim at the ports since Moscow pulled out of a deal allowing Ukraine's cargo ships safe passage through its blockade. Further, issuing a stark warning that it now considers any ship sailing through those waters a potential military target, raising alarm at the U.S. State Department. I think it ought to be quite clear to everyone in the world right now that Russia is using food as a weapon of war, not just against the Ukrainian people, but against all the people in the world, especially the most underdeveloped countries who depend on grain for them from the region. And another threat seems to have reemerged on the horizon. Video appearing to show Wagner Group boss Yevgeny Prigozhin addressing his fighters in neighboring Belarus. Berating Russia's frontline forces in Ukraine as a disgrace. It's the first time he's been seen since that alleged mutiny and march on Moscow last month. Hinting his forces would be preparing for a possible return to the war. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Christians would be persecuted as we read in Matthew 24, 9, and Luke 21, 12. Matthew 24, 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Luke 21, 12. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Al-Qaeda is running rampant in Afghanistan. The new United Nations report says the group is operating numerous terrorist camps where Islamic fighters are training for suicide missions. Afghanistan's tiny Christian population is more at risk than ever. Still, these believers are standing strong in the face of deadly persecution. George Thomas reports. Despite promises that Afghanistan would not become a haven again for terrorists, the 27-page UN report says groups like al-Qaeda have greater freedom for maneuver under the Taliban than before and that the threat of terrorism is rising in both Afghanistan and the region. The Taliban has been cooperating with al-Qaeda, has been supporting and sheltering al-Qaeda. It did it during the U.S. presence in Afghanistan, and it continues to this day. Two years after the U.S. withdrawal, al-Qaeda-linked officials are reportedly now helping the Taliban lead in three provincial governments and have five new terror training camps around the country. Meanwhile, the U.N. says the ISIS threat is also growing, leaving many Afghans, especially those who are non-Muslim, uncertain about their personal safety. Dr. Martin Parsons has worked in Afghanistan for years and says even though life for Christians is dangerous right now, it will only get worse as al-Qaeda's strength and footprint grows. The Taliban follow a code of Islam called the Hanafi Code, which basically says any adult male who is deemed to be a convert who have left Islam um, gets three days to repent and then is executed. But under al-Qaeda, it's simply execution on the spot for Christians. No one knows for sure, but Parsons estimates that there are between 5,000 and 20,000 Afghan Christians in the country. Gospel is not going to be stopped by, by, by Al-Qaeda, Taliban, or ISIS. Former Muslim and native Afghan Hussein Andares hosts a Christian television program that's seen inside the country. He's in regular contact with secret believers who tell him they are undeterred by the growing threats. Yesterday, I spoke with one man from Badakhshan. He says, no matter what, I will follow Jesus even if I have to be killed, even if my entire fellowship here, he's a church pastor. We will go on trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. They are very strong. A recent State Department report blamed both the Trump and Biden administrations for not adequately planning for the withdrawal and failed to anticipate the collapse of the Afghan government. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, 
For great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. The Christian persecution the church is suffering right now, awful as it is, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. He will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history, encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed and empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate Christianity. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in Scripture as the Antichrist as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. We begin today with more devastating weather. In North Carolina, an EF3 tornado caused massive damage, including to this Pfizer plant, which makes essential medications. In the South and Southwest, more than 120 million Americans are under heat alerts as Phoenix hits three straight weeks of highs above 110 degrees. And this is the scene in Western Kentucky where heavy rain brought catastrophic flooding. Justin Michaels from our partners over at the Weather Channel is in Mayfield, Kentucky, which was especially hard hit. The governor here in Kentucky has asked people to pray for his state. He's also declared a state of emergency for small communities like here, Mayfield, Kentucky, to help clean up issues like washed out roadways. Row after row of homes and roads in Mayfield, Kentucky were left submerged Wednesday morning after record rainfall triggered flash flooding in the western part of the state. A little less than a foot of rain falling here in Mayfield, Kentucky in the last 24 hours. What it did, flooding out churches, cars in yards, houses surrounded by water, garages surrounded by water, and even the elementary school surrounded by water here in Mayfield. And there is more rain in the forecast. Emergency crews spent all day rescuing people stranded in their flooded homes. This washed out roadway swallowed a car. And in the city of Arlington, resident Gary Carter took it upon himself to rescue stuck neighbors with his small boat. Well, I've dealt with water here before, but it's never been this bad. To the dangerous storms on the move across the country and the cleanup in North Carolina this morning after a monster tornado touched down outside of Raleigh. Look at all this debris strewn about this morning. We've got the remnants of not only part of the structure, we have a ceiling fan here easily about 100 feet away from the inside of the house. And you can see how it got out here because the top floor of this home was just ripped away. And while it is a miracle that so far nobody's been reported killed more than a dozen people were hurt by this tornado oh my god dude this morning cleanup after a massive tornado wreaks havoc in north carolina Is it coming this way? a powerful ef3 twister touching down roughly 50 miles northeast of raleigh wednesday there are several buildings with roofs ripped off with winds up to 150 miles an hour, the tornado leaving a path of destruction for more than 16 miles. I can tell you that we're always preparing for this moment, but no, it was totally unexpected. In Rocky Mount, this Pfizer manufacturing facility destroyed. Trees uprooted, lying in rows. We came out of it and nothing we owned it. Businesses and homes decimated while several roads, including parts of I-95, were left impassable. I don't have anything to rebuild with. I mean, this is it. 
everything I had was put into this home. And in the distance here across this golf course, you can see the path of this tornado. All those trees there absolutely snapped in half part of that 16 mile path. And this storm did not just ruin people's homes. That Pfizer plant that was destroyed, that's one of the largest employers in the area. And it could even potentially have an impact on our supply of some medicines across the country. The extreme weather is wreaking havoc around the globe. Urgent evacuations are underway right now in Greece as wildfires rage just outside of Athens. We are in a small village about 17 miles west of Athens. The fire racing through here. You can see the scorched earth still smoldering there. And one of these burned out cars, residents told us they had just minutes to decide whether to try to fight these flames or to run. This morning, firefighters racing to stop five dozen wildfires from threatening more homes and lives in Greece. Overnight, reinforcements arriving from countries across Europe. Urgent evacuations underway. Bomber! 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 Officials rushing to evacuate and help residents as smoke fills city streets. Police pleading with nuns singing hymns at this monastery to leave, which they eventually did. And in this small village west of Athens, Luis Arriado told us they were fending for themselves as flames spread. We needed help and no one was here for us. No one. Not even the firefighters. No, no one. Yet even as Europe swelters with spreading wildfires, Americans are arriving in record numbers. The heat is just overwhelming. It's You walk out of the hotel and it almost kind of hits you in the face with how hot it is. The pandemic delayed Heather Perkins' first planned trip to Athens. She finally made it, but says the heat is overwhelming. The sun is blazing hot. I was at the Acropolis and the sun was almost unbearable as far as the heat. There were some people definitely struggling with probably what I would assume would be heat exhaustion, dehydration, things like that. Back here in this small village overnight, we've watched as a steady stream of helicopters and airplanes have been dumping water on the flames on the other side of this ridge behind us. But with the dry, hot and windy conditions expected to persist for the rest of the week, Robin, one government official warned that the worst may be yet to come. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Tonight, police are investigating a shooting inside a Florida City Walmart that left one person dead and two others injured. The suspected gunman is in custody. A man shoots himself after shooting two women, killing one of them. Chicago police say a 34-year-old man got into an argument with a woman at that home when he pulled out a gun and opened fire. He then shot himself and remains in critical condition. A 32-year-old woman was killed. A 53-year-old woman is also in critical condition. 31-year-old Willis Thomas Jr. was fired from his job at the FMT shipyard in Harvey last week. Monday afternoon, he returned, allegedly angry, killing two former co-workers. I see that black guy in the ground with a bunch of shots, and I see another white guy with a bunch of shots, too, and, and the chest and the hands. He came back because he got fired or whatever. He, had a, he was holding a grudge. Just before noon today, Oakland police responded to a deadly shooting near 106th Avenue in Bancroft. They found a person shot inside a car that had crashed. It was the fourth person to die by gun violence in the city in less than a day. Sadly, in the span of 10 hours, the city of Oakland experienced four homicides, two of which occurred in one incident. At this time, we do not believe any of these incidents are connected. The first deadly shooting happened around 1.30 this morning. Police arrived at 89th Avenue and D Street and found a man and woman shot to death inside a home. Then, before 5 this morning, a second deadly shooting near 18th Avenue and International. The Bible tells us in the last days that people would lack sympathetic understanding, that people would be unfeeling and pitiless toward their own family, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The snow also... Then in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, 
proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Without natural affection is the Greek word astorgos, which means without affection for family, parents or children, thus hard-hearted towards kindred. This is exactly what we are seeing in our world today. Ivan, thank you. Now at 11, a developing story. A South Florida mother is in jail tonight, accused of trying to hire a hitman to kill her own child. It's a story that doesn't seem real. An 18 year old mother wanted to kill her three year old son. So she goes online and tries to hire a hitman from a website called hireahitman.com. She went on a website to hire a hitman. 18 year old Jasmine Paz faced a judge Wednesday after investigators say she tried to get her young son killed. Her actions even shocking the judge. What? To kill her own child? Kill a rope shot. I didn't get that far. According to the arrest form, investigators say Paz sent an email to the folks at rentahitman.com, which is a parody site. But the only man you'd see behind the screen is Bob Innes, who isn't a killer, but instead an IT specialist. It amazes me at the number of requests the website gets uh, on a monthly basis. It's shocking. It's scary. We turn now to a disturbing scene in Milwaukee. Authorities say two young brothers, just seven and nine, have escaped an alleged house of horrors, climbing out through a window. Authorities believe the boys spent much of their young lives trapped in that home, a latch on the outside of their bedroom door. Tonight, this mother facing criminal charges along with her boyfriend after police in Milwaukee say her two sons, ages seven and nine, escaped a house of horrors where they were locked up for years. Sounds like some of the neighbors be saying that the uh, children might be in danger. Neighbors calling 911 after spotting the brothers walking around naked and bloody, describing them like cavemen. The look on their faces was pure bewilderment. I don't think they'd ever been outside before. Police say the windows in their bedroom were boarded up, but they escaped through another window. My sister noticed some, right away something was wrong. Their hair was just very unkept, and then she realized they were naked, that they were bruised and had red marks. Inside the home, police say they found the children living in filth in a terrible hoarding situation. The mother, 34-year-old Katie Koch, who claims she homeschooled the boys, is now charged with child neglect and false imprisonment, along with her boyfriend, Joel Mankey. It's like something out of a horror movie. These children were essentially confined to their room for much of their lives, and the door had a latch on the outside, and the windows were already shut. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear 
that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.